We're live. G'day, Groovers. Welcome to the shitty kitty kitchen. Cheers. Um, that's water. <laughs> and a lot of ice. I'm trying a different setup in my kitchen today. I'm actually live on my phone. Um, now it looks like I'm live on the YouTubes. And I'm just going to check Facebook because I'm also broadcasting over there. I just want to make sure I have the volume switched off. Yes, I do. But anyone on Facebook land, if you want to come over and join us in um in YouTube, I have put the link to the YouTube channel under my Facebook post. So I don't know if Facebook comments are going to show up in um in here or not. But I'll put Facebook on my screen so I can see Mel Mel present. Hey, Francesca. So my Facebook people, I haven't been live on Facebook for a long time, but um, I decided to go live on Facebook as well to let you all know that my channel is now over a 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, and that's kind of a big deal, apparently. Mel Mel can vouch for me. <laughs> but we're doing a pretty simple, I was going to go live at 4 o'clock, but I realised dinner will probably be ready at 5, and I'm not really into eating dinner at 5. I'm like, Sunny my cat who's just had dinner and she's got the zoomies so there could be a small fluff ball like a little pom-pom with feet tearing around the kitchen from time to time so i went to the brim creek farmers market today and i've got this beautiful basket full of wasn't quite as beautifully styled when i was at the market but i've got all this beautiful fresh produce and we're going to make poached baby vegetables and a caper mayonnaise out of Yotam's, Yotam Ozelenghi's book, Plenty. If you've got his book and you've got some veggies, why not cook along? It's on page 12. This is the book, Plenty. Okay, that's problematic. I can't see my phone to do that. But, yeah, this is the book, Plenty. I'm sure you've seen it. I mean, it's, it's one word. There we go. So you'll find the recipe on page 12 in the roots section. We're going to be cooking the books. I'm going to be cooking through lots of different cookbooks for the next couple of years, hopefully. And um, I just picked this one because I was off to the farmer's market. I thought, let's start with a vegetarian feast. But for the carnivores who are watching, just cook whatever protein you like, beef, lamb, chicken, fish. Grandma Ducky food. So, yeah, we're doing a poached vegetables. Now, I've never poached veggies before. They're going to get poached in shitloads of wine and a few other nice tasty things. Um, you can use whatever vegetables are seasonal, but I've gone for quite a few root vegetables, carrots, parsnips. My blouse, it's actually a sarong. <laughs> oh, not a sarong, a caftan. It's a caftan, a moo moo. It's a, it's a little. It's a little Sunday afternoon outfit. Oh my god, guys! I did a um, ten minute. I'm doing. My sister gave me um, a beautiful gift, was which is to do a thing called mindful in May, and you do a daily meditation. And the one I did yesterday morning. Oh my god, I was invigorated. I got so much stuff done. And because I went to the farmer's market this morning, I didn't do it. I thought, oh, I'll try it after lunch, see what that's like. And it was all about focus and I couldn't focus on it to do it. Um, and they had a bonus meditation for children and I put that one on and the simplicity in the language actually got through to me. It was also about focus. Um, I've now got an imaginary butterfly friend called Heather who's silly. Um, I had to name her. I don't know why the name Heather popped in my head. And I was had to choose her personality and Silly was one of the suggestions, so I went with that. Um, but both of them were about focusing and I seriously could just curl up in a ball and have a nice little nap right about now, but we'll try and focus. Even cuter, the caftan. Thank you, grab my ducky. So if you do have some veggies in your kitchen and you feel like cooking along, 
Yosham says in his little blurb at the top, you can pretty much put whatever sort of veggies you want in the poaching poaching uh, juice. By the end of his recipe, he just refers to it as liquor. <laughs> I think he was getting drunk while he was making it. By the end, he's like, oh, bugger saying poaching juice. Let's just call it grog. Um, but, yeah, he's pretty much like if it's seasonal, poach it. And the harder the veggies go in first, they poach for like three or four minutes. And then you put the softer things like we're going to be putting zucchini in. So that'll go in a little bit later. What's a veggie? Well, let me answer it with this beautifully um, styled basket of goodies. These are veggies, Mel Mel. Oh, and there's a fruit in there as well. There's a lemon, but um, and a few. There's a bit of herbage there. Some some fresh dill, delightful. So yes, yeah, so we're going to be um, not cooking this whole basket. But we're going to be doing that. But we are going to kick off by making the caper mayonnaise. So there will be a little bit of uh, noise pollution at the start. I can't see anyone chatting in um, Facebook land, so there's a few thumbs ups. But if anyone does want to jump over, there's six people watching apparently on Facebook. You know, Facebook, if you click on the link and come over to YouTube, you'll be able to chat. Cheers, everybody. Sunday night. We will be finished by the time MasterChef starts as well. Go, Scott. And go, Sabina, the little Tasmanian girl who I don't know, but I know her parents. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be doing some uh, yeah, green crap. Well, there's some, there's some yellow crap and some orange crap. There's even some red crap. Come on, Mel Mel. Get in the fun. I know it's incredibly healthy, but I love veggies and I love them really crunchy. I've never poached a veggie before, so I thought, fuck it, why not? It was the first recipe in his book, so we're cooking the book. Just letting you know in advance, so if I come across any recipes, most unlikely there won't be any pork, but any recipes involving um, eggplant and shitloads of olives, unless the olive isn't, a vital component, um, I won't be making it. You hope that's gin. <laughs> Imagine if this was neat gin. Woohoo! Happy Sunday, everybody. Mm -hmm. So let's get this show on the road. I'm going to flick this little thing around a bit and maybe back a little bit. Oh, I rehearsed earlier and it looked much better. There we go. A bit of a workstation. Hang on. You need more of the food and less of the touring. Okay. I've actually got to turn the overhead lights on because it's starting to get dark and I can't see a bloody thing. <laughs> hey, Deb. Can we bake the flamingo? If you've got a flamingo you want to bake, go for it. Just going to put my scrunchie too. Got to put my hair back when I'm cooking. Now, I've never made this before. It's um, We're all in this together. We're all experimental guinea pigs. I'm just going to move this so I can actually read the recipe as we go. I have prepared everything, so it shouldn't take too long to make all of this stuff. But we're going to kick off now with the mayo. Um, oh, the one on the deck. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a um, a watering can. Isn't it cute? Now, I don't have one of those fancy food processors with a little hole in the top so you can pour oil in. I just give it a bit of a blitz, add a bit more oil, blitz a palooza. I didn't realise you could say the flamingos. You have a keen eye there, Mel Mel. Hopefully that's okay to look at. Um but, yeah, I don't have one of those hole in the top at gr gradually add oil thingamajigs, so we're not using one of those. But we're going to make the mayo first. Just getting my little gadgetry together. Lots of mayo. Well, I'm going to make his quantity, so whatever 
whatever Yotam says, Yotam goes. I, I do like to try recipes the way they're written and then if I want to tweak them a little bit, I will. I'm hoping that angle's not too um, bad. We're going to kick off with some garlic. Now, I'm actually going to ignore him on this. He says half a garlic clove crushed. Like, seriously? No. It's not like I'm going to, you know, save half a clove and remember to eat it or cook with it, you know, two days later. The whole clove is going in. Thank you very much. Beautiful garlic. It's so fresh I can't pull it apart. I'd normally put a bit more than a clove possibly, but I will stick to Yotam. Yotam never lets me down, so I'm putting my trust in Yotam and I'm putting my garlic under the bench where it belongs. Let's just get this little guy out for this. So we're just going to crush some garlic. I wonder if anyone's cooking along. You measure garlic with your heart, not a recipe. Well said, Stacey Marie. How are you, gorgeous? You double it, Deb. Hammer time. I've got a friend whose name is Hammer. And when uh, Hammer time comes on, you should see the move that he busts out. Boy, does he bust a move. I know, half a clove. Redonkulous. But yeah, I love heaps of garlic, but to be honest, I'm more interested in seeing how the the caper the caper goes. I used to have the best garlic press in the world. And god damn it, it broke and I've never found one nearly as good. This one's okay, it's the same kind of concept, but just doesn't have the just not as good as one of these ones. Hang on. Where's the camera bit on my phone? I'm learning as we go. It's one of those ones, but the one that my mum had was just like two bits of metal, bang, right through, no wastage. You didn't have any of this bloody, you know, sort of hanging around in the bottom. I go to garage sales not to buy anything but to see if they have one of those old-fashioned garlic presses because it was so bloody awesome but anyway uh we're now going to get an egg yolk free range egg of course this happy little fucker i'm going to split the yolk and the albumin <laughs> the white bits I think a cape is actually like a seed from a plant. It is often served with fishy dishes, yes. All right, there's our yolk. The yolk broke, but that's fine. It's about to get blitzed to buggery. So I've got my little compost bowl for all my scraps. You'll love this, though. I don't have a compost bin because I live on a um, house, live in a house on stilts. And I've got a garden below the deck, over the deck, and it just fertilises the garden or the possums get it. So, yeah, your free-range egg yolk. Don't put the white in, just the yolk, everybody. I did wash my hands before going live. And now that I've got yolk on them, I'll be doing them again. I'm not yoking. That just sounds dirty. Put the yol in, please. We love the fat. Look, guys, I'm cooking this true to the recipe. I have this discussion. Every time I go live cooking, I get feedback. I'm cooking true to Yotam. Yotam is my god. If there's something about it I don't like and I want to tweak it, I will. But in to like pay homage to my favourite chef in the world, I'm cooking it as he suggests. So if you want to tweak it, go for it. I won't stop you. But I want to see what Yotam's, the pure version, and I've already 
busted out a move by throwing in an extra half a clove of, clove of cup of garlic. So don't say I don't live on the edge. You tell me I'm not a rebel in the kitchen. A whole half a clove of garlic more than he told me to put in. I've already done that. We're now going to add our uh, one and a half. Oh, I thought it was tablespoons. It's teaspoons. Lucky I read the recipe again of white wine vinegar. One and a half. See, look at that. A bit of a loose measurement there. Didn't use the half a teaspoon. Just put a bit of half into that one. Again, tell me I'm not a rebel. Now, I had people heckling me when I was doing recipes from Diet Doctor. I actually got, which is a keto platform, um, I got heckled because they did a sw Swedish meatball dish and the meatballs were actually baked, not fried. Fucking hell, everyone was heckling the crap out of me and I'm like, guys, I've got permission from this website to cook their recipes and I'm cooking it the way they tell you to. Yeah, I don't normally bake my meatballs either, but let's see how they are. And they were fucking amazing. Shit, I have the mixer and never thought to put the oh the lid. Yeah, it's a non-stick liddy thing. Have you got one of these too? This acts as a lid, but also yeah, a non-sticky, a non-slippy base. There you go. See, Deb's learned something. Deb's being positive. Unlike Ducky and Mel, Mel, my hecklers. Actually, I think well, Mel, Mel is more of an encourager. You, I, I love your loving harassment. Don't you worry about that. We're going to chuck in. There's not going to be a shitload of mayo. I'm letting you know right now because we're only putting half a teaspoon of Dijon. See, I don't know, Yodan, what are you doing? These are like tiny measurements. I love Dijon more than life itself. Half a teaspoon? I mean, check out the size of the jar of Dijon I own. Like, I don't do Dijon, like, in puny amounts. I buy the big fuck-off... French gigantic jars of love and happiness. Half a teaspoon. I don't think so, Yotam. Now I'm completely messing up the fine, gentle, delicate balances of his mayo. Looks like we're going to have enough mayo for like half a person. I'm oh, sorry, Yotam, I shouldn't be bagging you out. I don't know if I need a teaspoon measurement again, but just in case, cooking with attitude today. I know, it's Sunday and we're all in a mood by the sounds of it. <laughs> uh, we're going to put in a pinch of salt. Well, he says, what does he say, about half a teaspoon? Love the salt. Straight out of the salt pig and into the uni mixture. Uh, we are now going to... Zest. Where the fuck did I put my zester? This is my favourite thing in the kitchen. True story. This cute little lemon zester. Where is it? Look at him. Hello, you. Oh, he kind of looks a bit Bart Simpson. If you if you're looking at him the right way, a stylized version. So we're going to get some zest off this beautiful fresh lemon. Um, only half of it though. He's into halves a bit. But look how pretty the zest is, guys. It's curly. It's like Grandma Ducky's pubic hair. I picture her having yellow. I mean, look at her picture. All right, that went to a level I wasn't planning to go before the mayo was finished. I'm actually hoping nobody's watching me on um, Facebook now because they're not used to what I'm like on YouTube. You guys are, but they'd be like, whoa, Tori. So we've got the zest of half a lemon, flourishy blows. And we're also going to get the juice of half a lemon, but I do need the remaining juice for the poaching liquid. So I am actually going to properly measure this out. Jackie's pubes. <laughs> hey, Veruca, how you doing? Did you arrive just as I was adding salt? That would have been kind of cool if you did. Oh, this lemon is juicy. Juicy, juicy, juicy.
I think I was meant to fold in the lemon zest at the end, but that's all right. I didn't. I chucked it straight in, but it was quite a large stringy bit, so um, it wouldn't hurt it if it gets chopped up a little bit. Here's some lemon juice I prepared earlier. This is for the poaching liquid. So far, you need 150 mils of lemon juice for the poaching liquid, and so far I've juiced... Um, one really big fuck off fat so lemon from my sister's tree, a smaller lemon from her tree, a little tiny baby lemon, and another normal size lemon. So you probably need like four or five lemons to get 150 mils of lemon juice. In case you were wondering, I didn't think it'd be very interesting viewing. To have me juicing. Oh, Sunny's come in to say hello. Hey, gorgeous. Sunny is cooking in the shitty kitty kitchen. I'm gonna get the seeds out of the pips out. There are a few pips in there, but it's poaching liquid. I can take them out when the poaches are happening. Jesus. Come on, guys. <laughs> but we'll take a few out. We don't need like 30 picks, do we, son? No. We only need 27. So I'm just going to add the remainder of that lemon. And yeah, we're right on 150 mils because I'm awesome. Um, I'm, good at, I'm good at guessing measurements. And like, it's really weird, guys. I've got this pantry. When I do recipes, it'll say something like, you need like a tablespoon of slivered almonds and I'll have a jar with a tiny bit of almonds in it at, left in it and there'll be exactly a tablespoon. It blows me away. Um, she's not removing the fuck off lemon seeds. You've never poached before either. I know it's going to be interesting, isn't it? So we've added all of the ingredients now except for um, the capers, which we're going to chop up and mix through at the end. And we're going to obviously be adding oil, which is the other component of the mayo. Now, I don't have Hell's Kitchen chumming up with the pit. Hell's Kitchen, oh, my God. That wasn't my plan. I don't have vegetable oil in my pantry. I don't know why. So I'm using avocado oil ridiculously expensive um it was fun to have but i'd much rather have a bigger bottle of a different type of oil so like i said i don't actually have um one of those and pour as you go so i'm going to add like you've got to use about 75 mils of oil so i'm just going to like put a tablespoon in first so that's like 20 mils And we'll give it a bit of a mix of rama. Sunny is going batshit in the background. I can hear her attacking the furniture. I'm putting it on a low setting so it doesn't blitz the crap out of it. Hey, Punish Dad. You're timing yourself out, Mel Mel. I don't know what I missed. I just boiled eggs and put them in a sandwich. Delicious. Oh, Grandma Ducky, no. Come on, come back, you guys. I need my headquarters. So that's good enough for me. Next bit of oil. 75 mils of this. Now, when you have got the other thing, you can really slowly pour it in and it starts to thicken. This ain't thickening, not surprisingly. I'll just do half of the next lot. But I'm surprised. I mean, there's, there wasn't a lot of base ingredients. Pour in slowly. <laughs> it's not thickening. We fucked the mayo. This usually works a treat. I make mayonnaise all the time. Fuck you, you awesome. It's as runny as a baby's nappy on a bad day. 
that a visual that you didn't need? She ain't sickening. Maybe it's the avocado oil. I was thinking, no, avocado, I know it's a fruit, but it's kind of close. Maybe I should have used olive oil. Wow, it's runny. This ain't thickening anytime soon. All right, so don't stray from your often when it comes to the oils. You just grabbed the worst coffee ever. That's not a good thing. I'm just going to stick it in the fridge and hope it sorts its shit out, seriously. I've never actually put avocado oil in a mayo, so maybe that's where I made a terrible mistake. In any event, we'll change the title. It's Poached Baby Vegetables with um, Caper Sauce. Oh, I know you shouldn't throw on your oils. But when you don't have any veg vegetable oil, and I did think about using um, olive, but then I was like, oh, I've got that avocado oil. Use that up. It doesn't matter. This is a delicious consistency of runniness. In fact, half of the stuff's still on the bottom. That could be part of the problem. In any event, I'm going to just use a... Spatula. It's kind of thickened at the bottom, just not at the top. This is the strangest mayo I've ever made in my life. Things happen in the shitty kitty kitchen that can't be explained. This is one of them. Come back. I'm going to give it one tiny, one more little whiz, 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 and stick it in the fridge. And it might end up growing up to become a relatively or slightly thicker mayo. So the lesson from today's uh, session so far, the first lesson: don't use avocado oil in mayo. Righty, it's, it's the technicality that an avocado is a fruit, isn't it? I bet that's what it's all about. Another couple of board because we're going to chop up some capers. So there is a caper made after all. One caper just hit the floor. And you need about two tablespoons of capers. Just give them a bit of a rough chop. I wonder what would happen if I put the mayo in the blast freezer. Punish Dad, Bob, was Punish Dad pulling the plug? This by caviar? Where? Have you got caviar in your house? Because this ain't caviar here. These are baby capers. Look, it'll be a sort of, you know, like a little mayonnaise, a little um, caper jus. <laughs> change the title, change the title, get rid of mayo. We're just going to chuck them in. Oops, I'll bring that a bit closer. I'll take this little fucker out. Probably a bit more than two tablespoons there, so I'm not going to use all of them. Capers are quite strong. And we'll just give this dainty, minuscule and slightly runny amount of mayo a little stir. And we're going to stick it in the fridge and hopefully it will thicken a bit. But if not, we are now going to be having poached baby vegetable, uh, post poached vegetables with a caper jus. Look, the next time I go live, I'll show you that I do know how to make mayo. 
Hey, Ruth, how you doing, gorgeous? Oh, there's, it's a bit sweaty here in the shitty, shitty kitchen. The heat from the chat. You eat capers out of the jar, Mel Mel. I do love me a caper. Right. We're going to start prepping our veggies now. It's going to get exciting, guys. <laughs> All the veggies. Going to flip this over. So I thought I would actually, um, so I can show you what amounts are and weights and things. Oops. Um, I thought I would measure just to show you guys. So like when you see recipes, a lot of people that watch don't cook. Um, and they might be like, what does that equate to? So I thought it might be cool to just give you a bit of an idea. Now we're going to kick off with some carrots. Oh, look, I've got one of those ones that's got a pair of legs. Legs 11. Look, check out her pins and her tight little butt. <laughs> now we're going to be leaving like this bit on because it's pretty, and when we cut them, we're still going to leave a little bit of the tops on as well. Now, he's not a big fan of the wash like crazy. He's a big fan of the rub or the scrape um, rather than rinsing all the soil off. We're going to be going for about 200 grams of carrots, so I'm just going to prep a few. You know, if they're a bit sort of hairy, McClary from Donaldson's Dairy, you know, you can pull a few of that sort of things off, but keep them as, um, you know, organic as you can. I mean, I'd, I gave them a bit of a wipe earlier, but I didn't select my carrots for massacring tonight. So, But if you like to wash your veggies within an inch of their lives, go for it. They're going to be poaching in wine. There's not going to be a lot of bacteria floating around. Yeah, I leave my skin on veggies too. You're all a bit turned on by the sexy carrot lady, were you? Hmm. But, yeah, leave the little greeny bits. I mean, you don't actually have to eat them. Some people would, but they just look prettier. Now, when Yotam says 200 grams of carrots, That's 280, 250. Oh, legs 11 has got to stay. One extra one. So that's roughly how many you need. Like it's not a lot, but there's going to be a heap of other veggies as well. All right, so we've done the carrots. Next up, we're going to do some fennel. I love fennel. Um, I couldn't get baby fennel. I could just get normal grown-up adult-sized fennel. So hang on a sec. Just take the outer skins off because they're a bit sort of gross. Mel, Mel, I like to bury my veggies, what, under all the other things so that you fool yourself that you're eating veggies. Now, the important thing with poaching that I read from Yotam is when we start doing the poaching, we're going to be putting, um, like, legs 11. She's going to be going in earlier because she's a root veggie. She's a bit of a more solid one. But then some of the lighter veggies go in a bit later. And the fennel, I reckon that's kind of like, I'm going to just try to cut it in. Round, sort of. Just so again, I'm going to put like bits like this in, like a chunk, and it's about that thick. Um, but these will go in a bit later. Was my point? They don't need as long as the the beet, uh, the carrot. 
Whoops. You can go back in there. All right, guys, who knows what this is? Oh, my God, this lady puts a tablespoon of water in her avocado mayo, salt and lemon juice, and the chemical reaction helps the emulsification. Are you, are you drunk? <laughs> Ruth, that's a very impressive sentence. Ah, it's your favourite. Hey, hey. So these, because they're a little bit bigger than the carrots, we are going to cut them, but we're just going to slice them down the middle. Again, we're going to leave, like, the ends on them. You probably wouldn't put as many of these as the carrots. It's entirely up to you. But then if you've got one like this, which is like a chopper chop, like massive head and then a little scrawny body. Oh, were you over on Facebook, Will? Thanks for coming over. Hi to anyone who's watching. I think there's three people on Facebook. So with these groovers, I'm just going to cut them lengthways. God. Actually, I may not even fit in the bloody pan. I might have to, I might have to um, skinny up a few of them. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, when you cut into a veggie, that flavour, yum. Actually, I'll put the little scrawny bits over this side. So, yeah, just think about what you're poaching um, and if it's a more solid veggie or a lesser one. Yeah, how did you go with the storm, Will? Fill us in on that. Um, I couldn't get asparagus. but I did get beans and I trimmed them earlier. So I've got some green beans. They kind of go in the, get after the root vegetables a bit before the daintier vegetables. We're going to chuck in a, a zucchini or a courgette, as some of you might call it. And, again, just try to sort of go for consistency consistent sort of sizes and shapes. And zucchini doesn't take very long to cook at all, so that goes up the quick end of the dish. We'll be going in a bit later. Yum. We've got a leek. Now, the recipe did um, call for baby leeks and I couldn't get any, so I'm going to try and water this, sort of make a kind of like a baby leek, but not really. I love baby leeks. Shit, another thing on the floor. <laughs> There's a reason it's called the shitty, shitty kitchen. Things, not that shitty is in angry, just as in shitty cooking skills. But I'm literally just going to try to sort of quarter up that leak a bit so it's kind of like a baby leak, but not really. It'll probably fall apart a bit, but that's all right. So, yeah, I mean, we've now got a bouquet of leek, but that's fine. Um, Grandma Ducky's hitting the vino. All right. Cheers, Grandma Ducky. Oh, I missed the soup. Oh, was it a parsnip soup? Yum. And that's probably all the veggies I'm going to do. There's nothing I've left out. Um, we are going to chop up a little bit of dill for a garnish. But, yeah, this is this is the veggies I'm going to poach. Now, for me, this is probably four dinners worth. Um, 
if you like your proteins and meats and things like that, obviously you can cook them up and serve them with your poached veggies, but I'm just having veggies for dinner because I love it. I love it. But that would probably be like four meals for me. So I'm going to have quite a lot of poached veggies. But everyone's chatting about soup. If you ended up with a heap of poached veggies and you were sick of eating them, then just chuck them into a pot with some chicken stock and make a or veggie stock, whatever, and make a soup. Can I get the little dill garnish ready as well? What are you guys having for dinner? Where's half the cow? Yeah, no, I'm probably disappointing people by not doing any protein tonight. I just didn't feel like eating any. Okay, deal is chopped. Let's get on with making the poaching fluid. Now, I'm not going to be able to read chat if I turn that around too far. I want to be able to chat with you guys. The beautifully uh, styled basket of food out of the way. So it doesn't take very long to prep your veggies, but like Yodam said, you could use whatever you wanted um, broad beans, peas, snow peas. I was going to grab snow peas, but there weren't any left. Um, Taco Bell, microwaving a pasty, homemade chicken noodle soup in a crock pot. Yes, delicious. So we've got our veggies good to go. We've got our caper jus, <laughs> um, thickening in the fridge, hopefully, and um, our veggies are all good to go. Now, if you were going to throw in like asparagus or something, just do like what I did with the beans. Like you don't need to cut them because they're already little anyway. Next, we're going to get some poaching liqueur happening. Now, this is a Le Creuset. So with these, if you put this at like a half temperature, that is the equivalent of having like your um, cooktop on high element on high with a different saucepan but with Le Creuset like if you need to go high go to half if you have to pump it up a little bit more and also because it's cast iron it takes a little bit longer to warm up um, but while we are waiting for that to warm up we're going to get the white wine Now, I don't drink white wine, but people who do visit my home and seem to always leave white wine behind. So tonight we're having, from South Australia, the Adelaide Hills, a Taylor's a Pinot Gris um, is going to be used. It's a gorgeous colour, isn't it? It's the same colour as my KitchenAid. Are you sneezing, Will? Bless you, mate. Bless you. Okay. I'm just hoping there's going to be 600 mils of vino. Oh, look, it's 610. Who gives a shit, right? Whoever left that wine behind, thank you very much. Oh, this has got a bit of a pinky colour to it. Hmm. Bit of a fruity aroma. Not sure if I'm a fan. I suppose it is a white wine and I don't drink it, but once it's cooking, so I've already chucked the wine in, that can heat up with the pot. And we don't have a lot of ingredients we've got to add to the uh, poaching liquid or the poaching liquor, as Yotam calls it. Hi to everyone over, over on Facebook land. There's six of you. You should come over to YouTube and say day because I don't get the comments. No, that's true. Yes, Andrew Byrne, I was about to credit. Oh, well, hang on. The, the boys are chatting. Hi, Grivels. So the Andes are having a beef stroganoff pasta bake. Um, the Andes gave me this for my 50th birthday. 
It's beautiful. And I cook in it all the time. I even the bottle's empty, Grandma Ducky. Um I even use this like for as a frying pan. Like I use it for everything. It goes in the oven, obviously. It's gorgeous. Just like my Andy boys. They never leave white wine behind. No, they don't. This Pinot Gris got a bit of a um a florally bouquet to it as well. It almost it's almost a bit like roses. Hello, beautiful A B. Hi, AF. Andes. They're gorgeous. Andy's Tory has my address, birthday in August. Huh? Andy's Tory has my address, birthday in August. Ah, she wants to come. I'm thinking that. Um, Sunny's, well, she's actually grumpy with me because she had the Zoomies right when I started this live, so I haven't chased her around the house yet. But don't you worry, she'll get chased when this is over. She gets chased a lot. There's a lot of chases, a lot of zoomies going on. I love you. I love the Andes. Beautiful boys. But, yeah, this beautiful pot, there's rarely, well, not a day that it doesn't get used, but most days of the week something is cooking in this pot. It's beautiful. I've got a big red, um, let a crusade, like a, What's it called? Is is it the Dutch oven, Andrew? It's got a name that you know is also a name for a, a pop off. Um, and I got that for my fortieth, and I hardly ever use it. This is this is the one. I do everything in this. Paella. Oh, that's why they're so expensive. Oh, gotcha, Melmo, Melmo. Um. Andy's Melmo was saying, I've got her address. Her birthday's in August, in case you want to give a random stranger on YouTube. Um, there's a YouTube, the link to YouTube is in the comment comments under the Facebook Live. Hang on, can I do it from over here? Am I this talented? I reckon I might be because I can reach my mouse, but I can't paste it. Hang on. It is, guys. Come across. If you don't have a channel, you don't have to have anything on your channel. Uh, matchy, matchy. <laughs> but, yeah, if you don't have a uh, YouTube channel, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have content on it. You just have to be on YouTube to start chatting. But it'll take you like a minute. Random stranger. Oh, see, look, my Facebook comments now come up in YouTube or in StreamYard. Interesting. You're not a random stranger to me, Mel Mel, but you and the Andes are mere acquaintances. I'm going to pop this up a tiny bit. They pick them by hand. That's ridiculous because, yeah, they're like, aren't they little buds or seeds from a floral, the caper? Hey, thingamajig, you're cooking as well. What are you doing, gorgeous? I haven't seen you for ages. Where have you been? Where have you been? We're just bringing this uh, white wine to the boil. You were that flower girl. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I take back what I said. Caper bush, immature green flower buds. So this is almost um, arriving at a, a boiling, simmery kind of thing, and we want it to just boil for on its own for two to three minutes. I'm kind of hoping that that florally bouquet dissipates by doing this. Roast lamb mm -mm -mm, and veggies. Well, all the carnivores will leave my channel and go over to yours if you go live now, thingamajig, because I'm doing a vegetarian dish, and there's a bit of displeasure in chat over that. And I fucked up the mayonnaise, so instead of doing these divine poached vegetables, I've never poached a vegetable before in my life, um, which would be served with a caper mayo. I didn't have any veggie oil. I've used 
avocado oil and accordingly we now seem to appear to have a caper jus. On MasterChef, it would be considered not a disaster, but a bit of a technical error. Yeah, see, Mel Mel, she's screaming for the cow. She's screaming for the cow. This wine is starting to heat up. I don't know if you're getting the aroma. It's it's starting to smell less fruity Lexia, I have to say. It's a Pinot Gris, though. It's quite a florally wine, I think. I have never. I don't even know if I've ever tried Pinot Gris. I think I stopped drinking white wine before anyone was drinking it. Is it a bit of a... You can't work out chat in the tubes? Huh, because you need to just create a channel, I think, Andrew. It takes like two seconds. Is it telling you to create a channel? Because there's a little chat thing under the YouTube and you just type in there like you do in Messenger, that kind of concept. While we're still waiting for this to come to the boil and it's not far off, um, we're going to be adding olive oil, lemon juice, bay leaves. Oh, half an onion. Let's do that. Let's cut up the onion. Move over, Jill. Um, what else are we going to be adding? Some celery. Oh, okay, I can cut that up too. The house smells like cheesy stroganoff goodness. Andrew, you're going to make everyone leave my channel to move into your house. <laughs> There's a lot of displeasure that I'm doing um, vegetarian, so, yeah. Um, doesn't say how to do the half an onion, but because we're poaching a lot of veggies, I'm just going to cut it into some quarters. It doesn't say to finely chop it or anything. So the vino is starting to boil. Hannah, how the fuck are you? I was reading Mel Mel's comment, by the way, if anyone thinks I'm being rude. Hi, Hannah, how are you doing? Why isn't my phone charging? That'll be the next thing my phone will go flat. And all you will have seen is runny mayo and some bubbling wine. And you'd be like, wow, that's quite the dinner. What else? I need to chop up some celery. How much celery am I chopping up? Two celery sticks. And what does the autumn say? He says to... Chop these into batons. You just say celery sticks, mate. What like you have on a dip platter, you know, batons, like truly. So I just do them in the way. I'll baton you. Oh, that pinot you know, gris has quite the flavour. All right, that's been going on its own for a couple of minutes now. So we're going to start adding all of the other ingredients. So we're going to kick off with 200 mils of olive oil. Uh, 150 mils of lemon juice. These are lemons. Uh, there's a combo of lemons from Brim Creek Farmer's Market and my sister's garden going in. And, yes, there are some seeds. but yeah. Um, and if you swallow it, a lemon tree grows in your tummy. Speaking of my sister's garden, next into the poaching liqueur, a couple of bay leaves from my sister's bay tree. We loves the homegrown goodness. 
um, half an onion, which I've just cut into some chunks. We're going to add the celery as well. And a teaspoon of salt. Or using the salt pig, just a guesstimate. The mayo, I didn't use vegetable oil, I used avocado oil. Apparently, avocado oil does not make a great mayo. Yeah, go the veggie. Light it. Light what, Andrew? Hang on, can I make this? I can see the screen over there. There you go, an action shot. <laughs> um, so we've added all the ingredients and we're going to bring this to a simmer. And then when it simmers, we're going to start adding all of these gorgeous local seasonal Tasmanian 30 nom nom vegetables. Bay leaves are good. No, it's a poaching liqueur thingamajig. Um, I just call it a poaching liquid personally, but Yoshimoto Lengi refers to it as a poaching liqueur, or it's not liqueur, a liquor. Um, so we've got wine, oil, all sorts of goodness. It actually smells pretty damn good right now, I've got to say. Bay leaves in the pantry, though, that's good. So remember, guys, Little Miss Legs 11, check out this little, this raunchy little carrot thingamajig. She's wearing leggings as pants. Look at her and check out her little butt. We like small butts and we cannot lie. <laughs> so, yes, remember to put the hardest veggies in first. So we've now got the poaching um, liquor at what I would call a bit of a simmer. So we're going to start adding the veggies and we're going to kick off with the root vegetables to make things look pretty. There's legs 11. She's gone in. She's in the drink. In go the parsnips. Ruth, look out. Your favourite veggies are going in. Down she goes. Down she goes. Oh, it's a bit snug as a bug. I think I went a bit overboard with some of the veggies, but that's all right. Bit of tongue action. I'm also going to put the green beans in sort of midway. So what he says is to give the root veggies like three to four minutes um, as long as they're simmering. Put that bay leaf in. They're not quite simmering yet, but as soon as they're simmering, give them about three minutes, no more. We want them colourful and crunchy. It is a classic song. Who's coming for tea? It's just me, but um, I'll be eating these as um, veggies, obviously, tonight for dinner. I'll have them tomorrow with possibly a protein, um, and then I will probably pop them into my slow cooker on Tuesday morning before I go to work with a few other bits and pieces and come home to a vegetable soup that's the plan stand so they're going to be really colorful really crunchy the wine too late what do you mean ab I'm actually going to put the green beans in. Next up. 
this this pot is full i'm telling you i'm telling you and it's just simmering along nicely it smells amazing guys hello sandy i miss your face too oh my gorgeous what a surprise everybody give lots of loves to Anyone new coming into chat like lovely Sandy, she's a real life buddy of mine. <laughs> she goes and she catches the damn cow. This will be a side dish, and it would be a beautiful side dish, but I've just gone for making the vegetables the hero of the dish. I'm just checking in the fennel now, too. Probably not going to be a lot of these veggies that I've chopped up. I'm actually going to just save and put them in the pot for the soup on Tuesday morning. Adding the fennel. And then we've still got to add the leeks. I'm not actually going to bother with the leeks, guys. I've got a, um, I'm making a quiche for my sister in law tomorrow. She's coming down for lunch. So I'm making a, um, tomato and basil quiche and the base of the quiche is phyllo and then the filling is all beautiful um oh to light the wine gotcha <laughs> um i think it probably would have been a bit hot because yotam wants this poaching fluid to be pretty chill but yeah i'm going to actually save the leeks and use them because in the base of the quiche it's cheese and cream and leeks and then on top you have tomatoes and basil it's beautiful and i'll be making it in a quiche dish given to me by the andes now i'm putting the little pointy bits of the parsnips in now <laughs> but yeah i'm going to save the leeks for tomorrow Himmel beans and then once we have the zucchini the zucchini only needs a couple of minutes And we'll be good to go. Not a not a fennel fan. <laughs> there's no room for the leek. And there's already onions and celery and I've used more veggies than even Yotam. So yeah, the leek is gonna go in this bowl with all these extra veggies. And I'll make a soup. with what's left over from here and also. Now, you don't need to stir this or anything. It literally just sits there and it chills the fuck out. And lastly, we're just going to throw in the zucchini and give it all about three more minutes and then it's done. Just got to push the zucchini in. Poached veggies. Well, I'm, I'll be honest when I do my review. If me no likey, I'll say so. Hey, Andrew, have you ever done this? Have you poached these? Have you done this yotam recipe before? I thought let's just grab a book and we're just going to cook from the front, cook from the start. I'm only going to cook the things I like the sound of, though. There's no point me doing like an eggplant dish because I will not eat it. You couldn't pay me to eat eggplant. Baba Ganoush, stay away from my face. So we just need a couple more minutes. Oh, look, everyone's talking caper bushes now. You're, you've been trying to find your old self-crusting quiche recipe. Nice. Are you getting love? Oh, and I'm the reason you bought his book. Did Was it Jerusalem that you got, Sandy? I can't remember. We used to talk food a lot, didn't we, babes? <laughs> Sandy's a very special friend of mine. So, yeah, thank you for throwing up some love for her. She's been very brave coming over to YouTube and saying good day to all you Groovarinis. Ah, uh, so you haven't made it, AB. Well, it's nearly ready. 
probably needs another litre. Let's see what happens to the mayo. The jus. Oh, it's thickened a little bit, but it's still not a mayo. It's not a mayo consistency at all. So that's what we all learned today, guys. Don't put avocado oil in. Um, sweet dreams, Will. All right. She's coming off. The heat. I'm going to take all the veggies out. I'm telling you what, they're crunchy as fuck. Like if you like your veggies a little bit soggy. Hang on. Not that good. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Oh, gosh, they're so good. Hang on. Try and get the camera into shot so you're not just looking up. I'm just taking them all out. Oh, my God, that's so yummy. That is so simple, too. And, oh, hello. Well, this platter's getting a bit heavy. Hang on. Guys, oh, my God. It's like they've just, um, it's like the poaching liquor has just, um, Almost like, well, it's enhanced it. It's, it's brought the flavour out in them even more. Like, they still taste true to what they are, but then you've got this really tasty white wine and olive oil, birdie nom nom. Um, oh, it's delicious. The after, oh, it's so good. Yum. And they're still really crunchy. And this um, particular recipe you can eat these hot or cold and i love cold veggies like i love eating cold roast veggies so you know you could even um because i fucked up the mayo you could even make a completely different sort of dressing and have them although i will show you what i'm going to do as recommended by yotam when i serve this fucker up for dinner Yeah, I think you should try it, AB. It's beautiful. Where's little Miss Legs 11? There she is. We'll put her up on the top. So this is um, what they look like. They are not soggy. They are crunchy. Um, that amount of veg is worth five. I'm not eating all of this. God, no. No, this is um this the quantities I did just to serve four people. I didn't have his recipe because it wouldn't have all fit in the it was easier to cook them all. And I'll have um obviously I'm having some for dinner tonight. I'll either have some tomorrow night with some protein. Um well I will be having that for dinner tomorrow night, or I might just have veggies again because I'm having a quiche with my sister in law for lunch. And then on Tuesday morning, they'll go into the slow cooker and I'll make a veggie soup. So I'm just going to put some veggies on the plate. want a bit of everything. I'm pretty much going to taste them with the mayo and give a review and then log off, booby. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. I know that doing a vegetarian dish has upset some of you. Where's Megsy gone? Hang on. There she is. I'll put her on the top. All right. They're a little bit slippery because of the poaching liqueur. So I'm, it's my dinner. I'm, I'm using fingers, guys. Sometimes you just got to. Hands are the best utensils in the kitchen. A bit of celery, and beans. I'm trying to make it look pretty, but they're kind of slippery little suckers. I'm not going to lie. What have I not got? Mm, some onion. Bit of an onion. Oh, I'm flicking things all over the place. Gee, it's yummy though, guys. Like, seriously, delicious. Delicious. Legs 11, you're on top, babes. All right. 
So what he suggests is, well, you didn't see any of that. Awesome. So there's a little legsy up on top. Um, use a plate that's got like an edge on it um, because what you're going to do is add a little bit of the coaching liquor on top, which is a beautiful colour, but use a plate so it doesn't run off it. <laughs> I've made a plate with edges. So he says to pour a bit of the coaching liquor on top or shiny, shiny. Please try the water and the mayo. Oh, Ruth, I haven't been able to watch while I, I didn't understand, like, quantities and stuff. I wasn't ignoring you. I saw what you wrote. So you want me just to put a little bit of water in and blitz it and see if that fixes it? Like what sort of quantity and stuff? I haven't been reading all of chat. I saw your comment, but I didn't get to see your response when I said, did you Google it? Julia and Julie all the way. One tablespoon of water and then give it a blitz, all right? Can we revive it? Let's see. Where's the thing? I'm just saying... Because I'm also on a very diff difficult angle. I'm kind of leaning over my stovetop to reach out. Oh, it smells really good, guys. Like as a side dish for carnivores, you will not be unhappy about it. They're crunchy. They're full of flavour. Yum. Birdie num num. What's going on? Oh, where's the other bit? Doesn't work if you don't put that bit in. Are there any more instructions from Ruth? Because a petition for what? Lack of meat. No, it's actually made it runnier. It did thicken in the fridge. It's now back to where it was before I put it in the fridge. <laughs> All right, I don't even know if I want it now. It's like it was sort of a little bit thicker. I mean, it wasn't mayo thick, but it was thicker than what it was. But now it's gone back to runny. Yes, there's a lemon in it. Yeah, salmon would be nice on the side. Um, okay, I'm just going to drizzle some over. It's going to look ugly. It's going to look like a baby threw up on a plate of vegetables, but so do you. So I'm hungry. And I want to clean up my kitchen and settle in for MasterChef. So, yeah, it didn't thicken it. But, look, it was my fault. I used avocado oil. So it is pretty runny, but I'm just going to drizzle it. It's certainly going to add some flavour. It actually looks like a guy has jizzed over some veggies. Awesome. Awesome. Although he probably should go to the doctor because there's little green lumps in his jizz. This is why I'll never have a cooking show, people. I'm going to, because of saying jizz, not because of fuck ups. Fuck ups are important. I'm sprinkling some freshly chopped dill over the top. Delicious. And I'm also going to put some cracked pepper on it. So, yeah, there's no dollop of mayo, but hopefully the flavours will come through. Hang on. Oops. God, this poor thing is collapsing. I'm going to do a taste test and then I want to get the hell off here. Oh. Hi, everybody. It's a bit close. Okay. Hmm. All right. Hi, guys. Shit. 
thought this was going to work. It's the most. Maybe I haven't tightened the right one. That was way too close for everyone's comfort. Here's my dinner, guys. It's Yotta Mojolengi's poached vegetables with caper jizz. Uh, sorry, with caper jus. <laughs> Not mayo, jus. And a beautiful poaching liquor. I've got to say, guys, the house smells amazeballs. I know that some of you are upset that I didn't do beef, but I also get a lot of vegetarians saying they're sick of me not doing vegetarian dishes. So this is for you, vegos. I don't know why I'm even bothering with a fork. You can seriously pick all of these bits of veg vegetable up with your hands. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try legs 11 first. Yes, go Scotty and MasterChef. Team Bagsy, woohoo! I've already told everyone on my YouTube channel they've got to go after Scott. Close and personal. So, legs 11. I love dill, so. Mm, 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 mm. Crunchy. The flavour's still there, and in fact, it's been enhanced by the beautiful coaching liquor mukbang mm. um, honestly for those of you that haven't discovered yosha if you do you will suddenly eat a lot more vegetarian dishes because veggies are his favorite ingredient and he writes the most amazing vegetarian recipes that you honestly don't miss not having any meat with it, I swear to God. I don't know if the Andes are still around, but I know that, oh, these carrots too, they're straight out of the ground this morning. They taste incredible. I'm just going to, it's just me eating in my kitchen, so things like not, you know, using cutlery and stuff. My mother would be horrified, but uh, okay, I'm going to try green bean next. But yeah, if you haven't given Yodam a go, do and try making one of his vegetable dishes and not having any protein with it. And you'll honestly, you don't miss it because this is so tasty. Mm. Beans are cooked to perfection. There's still a lot of crunch. Um, the caper mayo, it's kind of blended in with the um, poaching liquor. It's, uh, there's a definite caper flavour. So, yeah, I don't have a big blob of mayo on top of my dish, but I've still got the caper flavour through it. It's really yummy, all of it. Let's try a bit of parsnip. Hi there. Tori, stop playing with your food. Sorry, Mum. Mm. I already love parsnips because they're such a kooky vegetable. But now... They're actually my favourite. On the plate, I'm going to try some zucchini and some celery. Ruth, look, we didn't rescue. Thank you for helping me try to rescue the mayo. I had faith. I just won't do that again next time. I'll just use olive oil or go and buy some vegetable oil. I just don't normally have veggie oil in my kitchen. It's not something I use very often, so maybe I'm about to. Mm. No, this is beautiful. This like it's cooked, but it's still got crunch to it. Like everything is superb, perfectly cooked, if I do say so myself. But if you follow Yotam, it's his work, not mine. Exactly. 
Yeah, try avocado mayo. It's awesome. <laughs> Mm, the parsnip's beautiful, Andrew. Oh, my God. All right. Celery. Mm. Mm -mm. Stringy celery. God, that pisses you off. You've got no idea you're trying to try and eat it. Great flavour. Can't do the stringy. Um, not all of them will be stringy. That's just the luck of the draw. What else are we trying? Zucchini. I'm going to use a fork. You loathe cooked celery. You don't actually have to have the celery if you don't want because the celery was part of the poaching liquor, as was the onion. Um, I mean, I do want all of it, but if you just like the flavour of the celery but don't like the actual eating, the, you don't have to eat it because that was kind of the liquor part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful, all of it. The fresh dill, the cracked pepper on top is like the perfect garnish in the absence of anything resembling a mayonnaise. Amazing flavours. I know somebody hates fennel, so I'm going to eat, finish on a piece of fennel. The zucchini is beautiful. The capers are delicious. I'm going to really enjoy shoving the rest of this in my face when I turn my camera off. I didn't end up doing the leek. The leek's going in the quiche tomorrow. Okay, Andrew's not a fan of the celery. Mm hmm Well, I know that Thingamajig doesn't like fennel, but if you like fennel, the fennel's awesome. Everything's awesome. you got the same, obviously, poaching liquor flavour and the dill and the pepper, but then each individual vegetable is just like, it's the hero. It's heroed. I'm glowing now. Mm. Weeding the garden and grazing on fennel. How how lush. Bit of onion at the end. Mm. Oh, that's almost oh the onion. The onion is almost like a pickled onion flavour. Mmm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's gotten rid of that bit of raw onion and it's turned into this delicious. Maybe I'm getting a bit drunk on the poaching liquor. Well, we got them. What were you tempted to throw in this stroganoff? Some celery, Andrew? You, you like it or you don't? Um. Okay, so we will be cooking the book. Uh, we are, I've chosen plenty from a heap. I've got a house full of cookbooks, um, but plenty is the one that I grabbed. Sometimes I'll be doing protein. If I'm just doing the vegetables, just imagine it with a big, fat, juicy steak or a stuffed chicken breast or a nice piece of fish, whatever. What is funnel? It's a little metallic or plastic thing that you use to measure things into the top of the bottle. But you can also put it in poaching liquor and it's delicious. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not really. They also make them in ceramic. The subtitles. Have I got subtitles on my video? On Facebook or on YouTube? Fuck a doodle do. The text. My laptop's right over there. 
where the Andes are chatting. Groovers, thanks for hanging out and waving to them because they're over there. Thanks, boys. Um, thank you for giving me the best pot in the world to do all of my cooking in. Again, we'll just go back and one more. Oh, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Mm -mm -mm. I want to finish this before. It, um, oh, shit, not that I mind cold veggies. Christ, sorry. Well there. This bloody... <laughs> Fuck it. When in Rome. Before I get a really sore back, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm actually going to be really legit when I rate these dishes. There's the pelican that Mel Mel wanted me to roast. Sorry, the, flamin the flamingo. Pelican. There. Oh, there. Can't do the back to front thing. Um, I'm just going to legitimately do them out of 10, and this is 10 out of 10. The fact that you can make this all year round and use different seasonal vegetables is gorgeous because you're going to get all these beautiful different flavours. You could get truly creative like over summer and put basil and tomatoes and do a lighter sort of one. The poaching um, liquor, like the oil and the wine and everything that went into it. I can't fucking remember what it was, bay leaves and all that sort of stuff, lemon juice, it's beautiful. So this is a 10 out of 10. I don't even know what's over the page, but I'll be turning it over, and if it's something that I go, not today, then I'll move on. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to cooking again. In fact, if anyone's not working tomorrow on Monday in Australia, I think I might try and go live and do the quiche in the morning. It'll be much quicker than this live. This has gone for an hour and a half. Um, it'll be heaps quicker, but it's a classic dish that I've been making since I was at uni. I, I swapped out short crust pastry with phyllo and it's the bomb. Sandy, you must be behind. Don't fuck the mayo with water. Look, we fucked it. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it kind of slid around on the veggies and um, mixed in with the poaching liquor and actually now i've got to get right down low okay i'm down low thank you everyone for coming in thank you everyone over on facebook a doodler keen dude doodler hmm yeah <laughs> i love you guys um Love you all too, Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube community. You've arrived when we went over a thousand, so you might occasionally see some content of worth. Um, thanks to everyone, especially the hecklers. And yep, I give this 10 out of 10. And um, have a great night, everyone. And if you're watching Australian MasterChef, go Scotty and go Sabina. And go Maya. She's from Tassie, but she lives in Western Australia now. So, yeah, she's the third in the, she's the trilogy. I love you guys. Stay groovy. See you soon. Thanks, Yotam. Bye, Mel Mel.